So, so those were all the commands that you would use for looking at files and directories, and now there's a whole another set of commands for looking and doing things with the internals of the files. Um, the first big one is cat. We went over that. Um, the next one is called grep. Grep will search using regular expressions um, the contents of the file. So if you want to know if a log file contains the word error, you would grep that file for error. Um, so let's make a temporary directory. Um, so <coughs> say we have a, some file and it's got a bunch of text in it and we're looking for the character A in the file, we can grep A and then the file name. Um, this command is really useful. And a lot of times you won't even do it on um, existing files. You'll pipe things to grep, which we'll go into more detail with later. But let's say you run some uh, run your own program or run some program that has a lot of output and you're looking for something in particular and you can't quite find it, um, you would grep the output. So let's say I'm, I'm looking for uh, uh, I'm looking to see if Firefox is running on my computer. I list all the I list all the, the processes, and I grep for Firefox. And the only program that's running is actually the grep program. Uh, Firefox isn't running. Uh, so um, that's it. Uh, grep actually gets more complicated. Um, this this A here is actually a regular expression, um, and I think we're going to do that another day. But in general, you can just type words that you're looking for, or um, you know, white space words, but then you would need to put quotes around it. So if I was looking for A, B, C, I'd see that that's not, not in there. Grep, really useful. If you're writing scripts, you're going to be using it. If you're debugging, you're going to be using it. So you use the VIM command to create a file? It's a text editor. We'll, we'll print it later. Oh. I was just trying to get some stuff in the file. Um, I got stuck in the VIM. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so, okay. All right, intro to VIM. This is in. why I don't use VIM, because exiting is not Okay, so if you're in VIM, type uh, colon, so shift semicolon. Well, hit escape a few times first to make sure you're in command. And then Q, and then enter. Are you out? No. Good intro to the <laughs> so hit escape a few times since it has its own other Hit escape a few times. Um, okay. <coughs> I've got a record memory. Uh, yes. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> we shouldn't go into the recording memory. So there are two big, there's, uh, there's two big, there's a religious war between the two big Unix editors, yeah. being no. Vim and Emacs. Uh, I'm an Emacs user because it's a lot easier to exit. Um, <laughs> Matt's a Vim user. We'll go over both later. Normally, the way it works is you will want to play, find the next, spend the next week or so playing with both. Pick one to devote the rest of your life to and learn it for real. Uh, because these editors tend to have a steep learning curve, they're incredibly powerful, though, once you do learn them. And once you've invested, 400 hours of your life and learning one, you're never going to use anything else. And that's part of the reason there's such a religious war, because when you're talking to people that have only spent all of their life using one or only spent all their life using another, of course their editor is the greatest editor that God ever wrote. Um, so we'll get into that some more later. Is everyone out of them now? Okay. So if you just do grep A, does it search the whole file tree? Without a file? Yeah. No, it takes, um, it takes standard in. So every, um, there's three special files that are always kind of available. There's standard input, there's standard output, and there's a special standard output called standard error. Um, so you can send things into other programs using the pipe, um, which I was gonna do when we do shells. But um, so I can pipe to grep and see that it's there, or I can search for ABCD and, and it's not there. Um, so by default, and cat works the same way. Um, if you don't give them a file, by default, they take what comes in 
I'd stay there. Yeah. Where do, where do you put the straight line down? What is that doing? Is it just separating commands? Um, it's kind of like you know how Andy did the um, the uh, redirection operators. It's like that, but instead of sending to a file, it sends it to another program. So um, those are things that you use all the time in scripts and in general, like. You might want to cat a file and then pipe it to a program that sorts the file, and then pipe it to a program that analyzes the file, and then pipe it to another program and then redirect it to, to um, you know, a final file. So you, you, that's why you know Linux is so powerful because everything is a file, and you just kind of chain these things along, and yeah. So it's this line you said directs to another program. Yeah. So how do you mention the program name or the type of the program? Using? You just type the program name, like just like I just typed ABC. Grep. Well, grep is the program. Okay. ABC is what you're searching for. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll go into more detail on the pipe when we do shells, okay? Which is a few minutes. Um, what's next? Uh, another program that's similar to grep is said. Uh, grep searches using regular expressions to your files. Um, said actually changes the file. So let's say you are writing some report and you realize you typed some noun wrong over and over again. You would use said to go through the file, find the incorrect occurrences, and um, replace them. Um, we'll do a small set example, but I don't want to get hung up on the regular expressions because we're going to do that later. So for example, we have this file now. Uh, let's say we want to make all the A's capital. We could said the file. And now you can see that all the A's are capital. So don't don't get too hung up on the regular expression. The point is said's there. We just want you to know it exists. So when you actually do need to do something with it, uh, you'll know what to search for and what man to look up. Um, and we will do regular expressions later, yeah. so all of that magic that matches type will cover in a later session. Um, I'll just mention there's a command in awk, which you'll often, if you're you know, getting help with something and somebody tells you to run awk, awk, awk is something that often goes with said. Um, I actually don't know how to use it at all. I just copy and paste it when I need it, but I know at least what it is. Is okay. it different than the awk compiler? Or is that the that is what it is, yeah. So it's a tokenizer. Yeah. yeah. All sorts of things. Inside. Uh, inside stands for uh, stream editor. Okay. Uh, another suite of commands which you'll often use or sometimes use are checksumming. Uh, the big one is md5sum. Will uh, give you a, a cryptographic hash of what the file is. Um, if you're ever downloading a file, a lot of times on websites, they'll give you either the MD5 sum or the, the SHA sum. Uh, there's like a whole bunch of SHA commands. Um, and you can run that on the file that you've downloaded, to verify that it matches what's on the website, and that way you know that you didn't get a file with errors or maybe somebody tampered with it. Um, so just kind of verification. Is there a hand? You, question? No. So when you guys went to download the VM on the VM website, I followed good practice. And anytime you're downloading a file, it should really include the MD5 sum with it because that's the only way for you to really know you're getting the correct version of the file. Um, most of you probably didn't check it after downloading. Best practice would say that every time you download a file, you also run MD5 on it, you compare it to the one on the website, and you make sure everything's jazzy. But it is there, especially for big files or for files where security is an issue. It's something that you always want to do. There, there's a Windows version too, but it's just harder to use because it's a GUI and you can't actually just type it. Uh, there's a command line Windows version, it's just not installed by default. Yeah. Um, okay, next command is sort. Sort will take um, file contents and sort them line by line. Okay? Um, so, let's see, we have this file here, and let's say now we want to sort it um, alphabetically. So we could just sort the file. And we see that now we have A's, B's, and C. Um, a lot of times, I don't know why, people like to cat files into sort rather than um, 
actually, you know, using the arguments the way they are. But um, you, you know, you can see stuff like that online. Um, so sort will either sort the file that you give it, or sort what comes into it on standard input. Um, if we check out the, the help for sort. Um, there's a whole bunch of options you can um, you can uh, collimate the lines if you're sorting a table and you can say that they're dates or um, uh, numerical or dictionary by default it's a dictionary sort or technical lexicographical sort um, and um, there's also a There's a random sort, so it'll just kind of, uh, it'll kind of permutate your file contents every time you run it. Um, that's useful sometimes. Um, I did it when I was setting out the polls. I generated a bunch of tokens for everybody, but they were alphabetical, so I sorted them randomly and then sent them out. Um, the next command is unique, which is often uh, used with sort. Um, so if we just sort the file normal and we pipe it to, to the unique utility, um, it'll just uh, remove duplicates. Um, I think there's a C flag, so you can count how many times um, the, uh, the occurrence has happened. Um, I think it's pretty much all unique does, but it is used that, you know, I was just using it uh, the other day. Yeah, so there's, there's a bunch of different things you can do with you. Um, Cut is a command which will allow you to isolate. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the sort command, do we see it sorted? Uh, if I was to do cat on the file again, it is coming as unsorted. So is there any way that I can rewrite the file as sorted? If you want to, so if you want to sort a file and save it, yeah. um, I don't think sort works in place. So what you would actually have to do is save it to a temporary file and then sort, so like if I wanted to sort file, and then I would have to save it to file two, and then move file two to it. Uh, and then we can see that now it's sorted. You can't do it in one command. Okay. Um, all right, last file contact command is called cut. Um, it, it's for isolating columns, so if you have a bunch of white space separating columns in a table, in a file, cut all that, you to get just one column. So don't go into bin. <laughs> um, if we add some, some columns here, um, we can cut the file. I think we have to give it a, a delimiter, and then we can get <coughs> field two or something like that. Yeah, so now, now the file has two columns, but um, that's how you would kind of isolate one. Uh, and use it pretty regularly, so you, know, you don't have to be a master at any one of these in particular, but you just have to know that they exist, because you'll probably want to be using them if you want to know what to look for. Um, questions on file Can we go over <coughs> said one more time because it was a little unsure. We'll, uh, we're going to do an entire regex session where we'll do said and awk and things in depth. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the power has of said is the regular expression. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so we'll do regular expressions. Specifically. You, you could teach an entire class in said, uh, but we'll go into it in some more depth. Um, any other questions? Question about sort. If you sort a file, does that permanently like reorder the contents, or is it only temporary? No, Just you have to. Screen. You'd have to save the sorted contents to another file, and then move the other file back over to the original file. Okay. Or a lot of times, what you're actually sorting is output from another program, right. and then you can just save them to a file. Okay. So the same question for unique. Uh, there are like four A's and two B's. Does this one show me A and B? Unique will not modify the file. It won't modify the file. Yeah. So in Unix, pretty much none of these commands are going to modify the file. The point is, they take the file, they act on it, they generate new output. And it's on you, then, if you want to somehow take that output and overwrite the original file. That's not the default behavior. So, I mean, sometimes a program will have a flag 
to do it in place, like when I did said, um, the I meant do it in place. If I didn't have the I, um, it would just print it out, standard out. 